Speedrunning is about maximizing your play to its absolute peak in order to beat a game as fast as humanly possible. And when it comes to Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green speedruns, no Pokemon can outpace this little tortoise. Or can they? Shawnee Doo challenged me to a speedrun race to see which of us could beat a speedrun of Fire Red and Leaf Green the fastest with one catch. We would be allowed to pick any starter Pokemon we wanted. With the exception of legendaries, fully evolved Pokemon, Pokemon not in the game. Neither of us had any experience speedrunning this game, so it would be a fair fight given that we both hold accolades in other notorious speed games. First step was determining which Pokemon could, in theory, beat the game faster than everyone's favorite little turtle. So I took a peek at all 151 of the original Pokemon, cut that number in half to give us only the eligible ones, and then eliminated all non-water types as I knew that this would be the type that would give me the most value over the course of the entire run. After that, I did some deep diving into learn sets, abilities, evolution methods, base stat totals, every possible factor that needed to be accounted for in order to absolutely maximize my run. And after all of that, I had narrowed my choice down to two Pokemon, Lapras and Squirtle. I mean, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I waited until the day of the race to reveal my choice to Shawnee Dew, and I'll be honest, I thought there was a very high likelihood that we would have picked the same Pokemon. So in dramatic fashion, we decided to count ourselves down and reveal which Pokemon we had picked for the race. Do you want to say who you picked? Yeah, I will uh, I will show that I have decided that the best Pokemon, in theory, of the original 151, because I forgot we could do up to Gen 3, is my girl Lapras. You're joking. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, right before the stream, I was like, I'm going to do Lapras, I'm going to do Lapras, and literally like 30 minutes before I switched. Oh, man. I actually went with another starter. I Did went go with, with Mudkip. Mudkip! <laughs> wow. <laughs> Who could have guessed? The speedrun legend, Mudkip. <laughs> ah. I guess I did forget to include about 230 Pokemon in my decision process then, huh? Whoops! Well, I was still very confident in my Lapras pick, and even more so now knowing that just moments before we started the stream, my opponent was thinking the very same thing. Even with all the other Pokemon available to me, I know that Lapras would still be the best amongst them for a Fire Red Leaf Green speedrun. Mudkip, you might think you're the king of Pokemon speedruns, but this isn't Ho and Buddy, so be prepared for a world of pain and suffering at the hands of Lapras's Rad. So, imbued with the knowledge of having watched the world record speed run once on two times speed, I knew that I was equipped with all the skills necessary to win this race. First order of business is getting out of Oak's lab nice and quick with our new companion, and I gotta say, having a 535 base stat total mon straight out the gate seems just a tad bit unfair, and I think our rival here would agree. Obviously, everyone in this particular playthrough is named A, as this society prioritizes speed and efficiency above all else, so we don't have time for silly things like proper names or titles. We've got things to do and places to be, and we must see to that as quickly as possible. The biggest two factors in selecting Lapras as my choice were one, learn set, and two, ability. A lot of the other water type Pokemon seem great on a surface level until you realize that you'll be fumbling around for the first two thirds of your prepubescent life with no way to scratch. I actually hate where this joke is going, so let's just say that Gen 3 learn sets suck and leave it at that. Secondly, Shell Armor is one of the best abilities in the entire game, and this was pretty much my failsafe as I could, in theory, never lose a fight. Since this is a speedrun, I'll have access to both healing and battle items, which will be a truly deadly combination given my immunity to critical hits. Because neither of us had speedrun this game before, and because we would both be using Pokemon that had never been used in this type of speedrun, we didn't have a set formula for damage calculations, routing, etc. So I felt that giving myself a Pokemon that couldn't lose was the best option possible. Before making it to Brock, I collected the only other two partners I would need for this playthrough as, luckily, Lapras can learn two of the required HMs to beat the game, so that was another advantage to picking this Pokemon. This first split of the game might have been the biggest difference maker in the entire run, as I was able to shoot out to an early lead by abusing Lapras's insane early game stats to make it up to and through Brock completely unperturbed. Meanwhile, Sean and his Mudkip, well, I can't say the same for them. I'm actually gonna wipe here. Oh shoot! <laughs> No, no, no. Oh, oh. With no antidote, you're, yeah, I don't know how no, you, I, I had no how you antidote. 
I don't get water gun until level 10. Ooh. Are you joking? No! Did you wipe again? <laughs> yes! <laughs> Man, <No>. Mudkip sucks. <laughs> yeah, it sure feels good knowing that won't happen to me. Look, if a low-level Squirtle with Bubble can sweep Brock, I don't think that I need to tell you that Lapras has absolutely no trouble here. So we claim our first badge and move on to the next gym, where things will definitely be a bit harder. In some ways, my ineptitude for speedrunning this game, in addition to my propensity to run into optional trainers, ended up helping me more than it hurt me, as I was able to reach level 13 for Body Slam, which would be my best option for defeating Misty. Eventually, I made it through Mount Moon after just a few more optional fights, and then I immediately beelined it towards the gym. There was only one way to find out just how good my strategy would be, and even if I failed, Misty's team would provide the most experience of anything nearby to level up on, but thankfully, I didn't have to worry about that. Let's go. Oh, we got such good RNG. <laughs> Are you in the Misty fight right Dude, now? Dude, Lapras is the GOAT. Yeah, I just beat it. No! Oh, this Lapras is cracked. Psst. Hey, over here. I've got to be quick since I'm in the middle of a speed run, but I need to tell you that I've partnered with GamerSups and you can now use code KID for 10% off your entire order of a healthier and cheaper alternative to energy drinks and soda. Oh, and by the way, I've hidden three $50 gift codes throughout this video, so good luck finding my buried treasure. Now I'm feeling super confident in my pick. If I can get through these first three gyms with a big enough lead over Sean, I feel more than capable of being able to sustain that lead over the course of the entire speed run. <laughs> I'm not scared of that weird salamander thing. Not to mention, Misty gives us TM03 for Water Pulse, which is an immediate upgrade over Water Gun, so I teach it to my Lapras right away, as this will be my best water type move until I pick up Surf and Fuchsia. One thing I did forget to mention, however, is that we had both agreed to enable animations for all of our boss fights, just to, you know, make the video that you're watching look prettier. But when you're trying to beat a game as fast as possible, you tend to just jump right into the fights before remembering to change it, so I was hoping that the race wasn't decided by a matter of seconds from forgetting to turn animations on during a fight two hours ago. Beating Misty was one thing, but Surge would be the real difficult one. This was the one fight where I had no way of hitting his Pokemon back for super effective damage, so things could really spiral out of control because anytime the AI has a way to increase its evasion, things can get really, really out of hand. Which meant that in order for me to beat him first try, pretty much everything had to go perfectly. But before that, we had to solve his stupid gym puzzle, and boy, is that even more infuriating when time is of the utmost importance. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Please. Yes, yes, there we go. Oh, with this kind of luck, Surge will be no problem. The pair here would be so huge. Oh, Lapras, my beloved. Oh shoot, there's the double teams. That's what I was worried about. Come on, just hit through. Nice, big. Come on, it's two at KO. Come on, just hit through one more time for me. Shoot. Oh, I just gotta get through one more time. Oh my God gonna be a roll yes yes oh lapras you're so good oh lapras <laughs> lapras does it the lapras diff at this point lapras has fully exceeded my expectations for what was even possible for this thing it has swept through every single gym with ease and that was the scariest one remaining because now we have access to battle items in celadon city that will completely blow this run wide open Despite the fourth gym leader listed being Erica, we can actually delay this fight until way later in the run when we have stab ice beams that'll send her entire team back into the ice age. So the next gym leader on the chopping block is Koga. However, we still have a ton of other things to do before we go down that path because as good as Lapras has been so far, I think defeating Koga might be a task too tall for our level 23 Plesiosaur. Like I said earlier, getting to Celadon City was a must, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, in order to get there, I had to go through Rock Tunnel first. And if you thought the amount of optional trainers that I fought inside Mount Moon was bad, oh, oh just you wait. So after escaping by the skin of our teeth with barely any PP to spare, we made it to Lavender Town where thankfully I was bringing my Lapras to the Pokemon Center for a quick patch up and not the Pokemon Tower to lay her and the entire speed run to rest. Shockingly, all the time I spent fumbling around inside Rock Tunnel allowed Sean to roar back into the race. Turns out that constantly making suboptimal decisions is actually a bad thing to do during a speed run. This was certainly a huge setback given my previous lead, but I had to 
quickly gather myself. You can't get rattled in the middle of your run. With only a little bit of help from Google, Rocket Hideout was a breeze compared to Rock Tunnels, so we were in and out of there at world record pace. With Silphscope in hand, we returned to Lavender Town on the backs of one very tiny bird, and not even an encounter with the undead would kill this run because we breezed through the rival fight, newly equipped with a powerful tool and ice beam. I then prepared to beat some Team Rocket grunts, rescue an old man, anger a bear, zoom past a biker gang, take a safari trip, find this old dude's dentures, and finally prepare for Koga's gym. Whew, I'm out of breath. This speedrunning stuff is even affecting my script writing. Ah, you know what? I told that Mr. Psychic guy that I was going to swing by and pick up the TM he was holding on to for me before this gym, but I got in such a rush that I completely forgot. Oh well, I'm sure it won't end up being that big of a deal. Oh, this is gonna be awesome. <laughs> Yeah, this muck is gonna be a little bit of a little bit of a demon, I might say. And he's minimizing again. Oh man, I just don't have enough damage output. Oh my god, this is gonna be a disaster. <laughs> oh, no. I, I think I think Koga's gonna. Yeah, I mean, I'm just. I, he's plus six now. Like I'm gonna be in really bad shape. I don't have antidotes. Oh, I'm screwed. <laughs> oh, I lost. Oh, here's where I die. Cause I'm gonna die to poison damage. Oh man. It ended up being a pretty big deal. This is the exact opposite of what you want in a speed run. This was a slow and painful death that ate up so much unnecessary time. My lead had almost completely evaporated at this point and Sean and his swamper were only getting faster and faster. The power gap had completely closed shut and we were pretty much on equal footing for the rest of the run. It was going to end up coming down to who could play the best from here on out. Guess I should have grabbed that Psychic TM. Although the biggest issue was really the evasiveness boosts and accuracy drops that are so well executed by this toxic ninja. I opted to teach my Lapras the Shockwave TM courtesy of our favorite war vet and went straight back into the fight. Stocked up on potions and full heals, I was ready to take Koga down. Oh my God, but he's gonna smoke screen me. Jesus, this is, this Koga is terrible. Oh my God, he's two for two on sludge poisons. This is so stupid. You don't need to do a Koga a third time. I know, this has gotta be this has gotta be enough. I did not realize how much of a demon he would be. Yeah, the shockwave might be the difference maker here. Yeah. It's still the I still am doing like no damage to him. How? Oh my god, I'm gonna lose to this dude again. Please don't poison this turn. Dude, what <laughs> just how? How is this happening? Koga is is literally gonna be the reason that I lose the run. Did you get through it? I got through the muck. I still have two more mons left. I've still got the wheezing and then another coughing. Let's see, yeah, like as long as I live this, then I'm fine. Yeah, oh my God. Of course I get poisoned though. <laughs> Holy. Just on the way out. Yeah, just, just one to go. Just one for the road. Oh my god. He got like, I think he got like six poisons or something over the course oh of that whole god. fight. Yeah. That was horrible. Woo! After 15 minutes, Koga was finally down. Really makes you wonder how Swampert did in this fight, doesn't it? Okay, I only X attacked once on a mud shot, but I feel like that should be enough. Yes! The comeback! <laughs> it could be real. It's very it's possible real. that it could be real. The Koga! Okay. <laughs> And I one shot the wings and yeah, I'm done with Koga. Wow. Yeah, I'd say pretty well. Regardless, I was still barely holding on to my lead at this point. I was still trying to follow the routing of the world record Blastoise speed run, so I hadn't hit up Saffron City yet, but I'm starting to think that if I had just crafted my own route, then this Koga situation would have been much more manageable. Thankfully, none of the other gym leaders will be anywhere near as difficult as this one was. Defeating Koga allows us to finally hop on the back of our transport Pokemon and set sail to Cinnabar Island. Somehow I wasn't completely rattled by my previous gym kerfuffle, so I, for the most part, expertly navigated my way through Pokemon Mansion, unlocking Blaine's gym where we had absolutely no problems sweeping through his team of fire-type furries with the newly acquired Surf. Lapras was pretty much fully decked out now with a deadly arsenal of Surf, Ice Beam, Shockwave, and... Strength? We'll do something about that later. In the meantime, I have a rival to embarrass. 
While the footage of the second of three Giovanni sweeps plays in the background, can I just talk for a minute about how I've always overcomplicated the entirety of Silph Co? Like, it's really just so simple. Catch a lift to the fifth floor, juke this one rocket grunt, have him juke you out, grab the card key, unlock a couple doors, fight the rival, grab the ultimate speedrun Pokemon from some random hostage in the building, and finally defeat the local mob boss. Wow, the timing on that couldn't have been more perfect. Before we could exit Saffron, we did have to take on Sabrina, which through the power of setup was almost as easy as every other time I've swept her team. Just two gyms left to go now. We are definitely in the end game, and considering that both of the remaining gym leaders are weak to one of, if not both, of our stabs, I think we're sitting pretty. Sure, the world record speedrun would have already been finished like 30 minutes ago, but hey, that's just a result of user error. It has absolutely everything to do with my incompetence and not Lapras. At long last, I decide it's time for Erica to revisit the nightmares of every other time we've massacred her gym, and then less than five minutes later, Giovanni falls for the third and, ironically, easiest time. Now all there was left to do was get to the Elite Four and hope that Lapras would still be able to outpace Sean and his Swampert. Lucky for us, they had a bit more trouble navigating both Silph Co. and Pokemon Mansion, so a little bit of that time lost had been recovered. It was my job to make sure I laid claim to my lead once and for all. Those extra astute viewers will remember this callback as I return to Fuchsia not to revisit my trauma, but to rid myself of that pesky HM strength so that Lapras could actually reach its full strength by opening up a spot for that psychic TM she's been longing for. Now she had reached her final form. Powerful enough to sweep our rival one final time on the way to Victory Road and hopefully even further beyond. Unfortunately, the little guys that we picked up on Route 1 don't quite have the muscle to move the boulders blocking our way, so I enlisted the help of this gym bro who was more than eager to help. With their assistance, the path to victory was as clear as ever. I was just five battles away from proving, in this very objective way, that Lapras is the fastest Pokemon to beat Fire Red and Leaf Green with. All I had to do was hope that Sean and his Swampert wouldn't be able to muster the speed needed to surpass me. Nice. Oh shoot. Oh, this is going to be so close. Really? It's going to be close. I don't know if I kill the Venusaur. I don't know. Oh my god. Okay, it's all going to come down to this. Please, come on. Please. Yes, I'm faster. Come on, Lapras. Oh, it lived on one. <gasps> oh! <laughs> it's charging Solar Beam. Okay, thank god we didn't get sand attacked there. Okay, I think I just have to surf twice. Psychic? Oh my god, how much is that gonna do? <sighs> Please don't be a speed tie. Yes. <sighs> oh my god, it's coming down. Oh, he's just dragon raging. Oh yeah, it's GG's. No, GG's. <laughs> I think I've just got two moves left. And I don't think there's any way that I am uh, saving this one. Oh my god, he lived! He plus one! Oh no! Gyarados, you can't be doing this. You can't be doing this, man. If Arcanine Extreme Speed does 147 damage to a level 56 Lapras and I lose because of that, I'm gonna be <laughs> devastated. Alright, one more. The only way to finish it? Yes! That's gotta be enough. There's no way. Come on, Lapras! Yes! No! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh my god. And that is time. 327. Oh my Ooh. god. Man, what a run. We had done the impossible. With a time of 3 hours, 27 minutes, and 9 seconds. Good enough for... Not last. I had proven that Lapras was the ultimate speedrun champ. Mudkip might have thought that it could just step into Lapras's territory and show her up, but we had other plans. Thanks so much again to Shawnee Doo for asking me to compete in this race with him. So be sure to subscribe to both of our channels. And once you've done that, check out this video if you want to watch me speedrun a completely different style of Pokemon game.